Alright, welcome all to the second episode of the Summer Spectacular Swoop Down. Um, I am G-Man, and uh, for today's show we're going to go through the Super 16 reactions, pretty much just see what happened in Super 16 and digest it all. So, I'm going to go give another show rundown here. So, we'll have a general round recap of what happened throughout the round, and then we'll follow up with uh, KT, the host of MRE Uno, distracted playing Roblox. That's going to be an interesting one to discuss about. Uh, we'll also discuss about uh, the two people who won honors in their respect uh, respective class. Uh, Harry Gold wins Best Rookie, and uh, Jesse Turner wins Best Veteran. Uh, then we'll discuss the uh, Super League uh, bubble here um, and the possibility of a second Super League line. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about when we get there. Then we'll have uh, my hot takes. Last time it was regional hot takes, but we're kind of in the regional finals. There's only four matches, so I'm just condensing it into just regular hot takes now. And then we'll have a uh, preview for the regional finals or the Electric 8, whatever you want to call it. Sorry, I got a Gatorade here just to uh, help me clear my voice and whatnot. So uh, let's get down to it with the uh, general recap. We're going to start with the East region here. So you see here already, um, TJ Smith um, definitely returned the form, and I would say both, both Smiths returned the form. Not related, of course. Um, but TJ returned back to what we're used to with being pretty dominant, and Aiden returned to being very much not giving, um, not, I wouldn't say an effort, but not being a threat. So, Aiden Smith unfortunately crashed out of the Super 16 for, I believe, the third straight tournament. Um, yeah, I believe that's the third straight tournament he's crashed out of the Super 16. So, unfortunate for him. I was looking for a little more out of him, but we'll see what he does next tournament. Uh, he's consistent, but I don't think it's good enough to consistency to make the Super League right now, so I think he does need to do more, but, uh, we'll see what happens with that, but, yeah, throughout the match, just, TJ kind of just held control, did lose a game there, but, TJ was pretty much dominant throughout, and there wasn't really much doubt in who was going by the time we got to the fourth game. Um, but then, one of the bigger upsets of the round, um, Aria's newbie struggles, um, they continue, very gold wins 5-3, uh, pulls another upset, and, uh, very gold played very well, Aria gave compliments to very gold following the match, and so very gold did as well as Aria, but, man, that is, I believe, the third straight tournament where Aria's lost to someone new, well, Eli's a little different, I mean, uh, but uh, still, Gerald is the new people, not people who are like uh, playing Uno prior to uh, this league being formed. But yeah, Aria's struggles continue. Um, I don't know how this. I'm not sure how this will affect her with the uh, bubble. I don't think it'll be too badly considering a lot of people close to the bubble failed in the first round. So that might actually be the, to the benefit of Aria. But we'll see about that. Um, so yeah, we have our East Regional Final. It's going to be TJ Smith and Marigold. We'll, we'll look forward to seeing who's going to win that. But now let's transition to the uh, South where, um, yeah, we had another upset. That was the second and only other upset of the round. Um, besides that, it went through um, seed-wise how it would go. So Sanford just called a shot um, against KT. KT had some struggles, which we'll get into in a bit. Um, and KT is going to miss his first Electric 8 ever. Um was in the final four in the uh, first tournament, the Electric Eight in the second tournament, and now the Super gets out in the Super Sixteen in this tournament. And unfortunately, it's looking like a little bit of a decline here. We'll have to see if KT can bounce back in the next tournament or if he just continues to free fall. And Turner, Turner in, coming into this match had a lot of people going against him, and even I said Caesar would probably be the favorite to win the region. I wouldn't, I ne didn't necessarily say that. Caesar um, was going to beat Turner, but I said Caesar was the favorite to win the region, and it was a very close fight. But Turner ends up proving everyone wrong, and he makes his third straight electric eight, one of only three people to do so. So, uh, props to Turner; he really uh, proved his worth when people were doubting him. And Caesar had a phenomenal fight; he gets ninth place automatically because he was the only one who went to game nine this round. But great first tournament for him. We'll see what he does in tournaments four and five. But he is going to need to do a little more um, to possibly be in the Super League. But this is a very good first step in doing so. Um, yeah, so now we're going to go to um, the very, as I like to call the very kooky region. Um, we have the West. Um, Clint's nephew. Um, this isn't a specific segment, but... Um, 
I'll just say that there was a lot of disruptions going on. He was asking um, about why we were playing Uno. He was asking um, a lot about um, why, uh, what jobs we have and whatnot. Uh, he also talked about a girl Clint liked, so uh, shout out to Brandy. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, very chaotic and unfortunate for Clint, and I feel like that really distracted him, and that led to uh, G-Man just completely running away with it. Um, it was 4-0 uh, by Game 5, and Clint was able to scrape out a game to prevent the sweep, but by that point, I think everyone knew it was over. It was just a matter of when the game was ending. So, yeah. Um, very disappointing for Clint. Um, if you want to see some of the highlights of that, you could check out Zach103 TV stream of the game. Uh, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure some of, them will give, some of those comments will give you a laugh, but yeah. Um, and then on the other side of the bracket, we have another 5-1. A lot of 5-1s this round. That's the one of the main trends I saw. Um, Lamas was able to beat Yoshi, and Yoshi pretty much kind of, like, had a bit of a struggle with his game plan. He was able to beat Dark in the first round, relatively he was able to get through him. But then he just ran across Lamas, who his a very weird strategy. The first time people play him, it's, like, very abnormal, very much confuses you and i think yoshi kind of got swept up in it and really had a lot of errors that really costed him the match so unfortunate end to his rookie run he does make it to the super 16 so it's not bad but we'll see what he does in the, in the next tournament uh and now finally we're gonna go to the midwest um yeah and as you see uh one of my hot, my hot take for this region was that dagby might lose the monkey and that very much did not happen um Dagby pretty much repeated T2. Monkey did take a game, but Monkey learns nothing. Apparently, apparently, there was a scouting report made specifically for Monkey on Ryan Dagby, and apparently Monkey just decided not to use it. So, uh, yeah, learn, uh, t take that, take that lesson learned for everyone who's still in about, uh, what to do with your opponent, especially if you were given a scouting report, not making it, you're given one. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, easily one of the worst showings in the round, in my opinion. So, unfortunate, and we'll see how Monkey, get, um, gets affected by the Super League bubble. Um, uh, he might move up slightly because, uh, a lot of people failing in the first round, but I don't know. I think he could have moved up further. I think it's a missed opportunity, if anything. And Peter, um, is definitely back, um, to what he was in March. Cruises by Vapor. And Vapor, who's easily the most difficult person to schedule in this tournament, uh, those woes come to an end, so I think we have smooth scheduling from here on out. But Peter is... Peter's back. I am comfortable saying Peter's back. Uh, April seems like a fluke, and he's back in the electric gate. Um, Dagby is going to be a challenge. We'll see how that matchup goes, but Peter is looking good right now, and he's really, really rebuilding himself after a very disappointing April. And then, uh, that's it. Yeah, why did I say there was another region? There's not a fifth region. <laughs> But, yeah, that should be it. We'll start with the main specific highlights. Uh, KT and Sanford. This was the first match of the round. Had to be done early because of a few different factors. Sanford was going on vacation, and KT was also going to be in immense jet lag, so the match probably wouldn't have been able to happen. So, this was June 22nd. This was the only time they would have been able to make it work. However, when that was happening... During the pregame, there was actually a discovery that the bot was malfunctioning. So as you see here, when you start the game, the cards just wouldn't show at all. And you would have no idea what the card even is. So that was a very, very bad situation here for a lot of these players. Because at that point, then, you don't really know what the card's starting with. And you'd have to just basically guess what, you, guess what the uh, color is. And that was pretty much a disaster. And it was not going to work. So there's a lot of... Um, questions going on about what to do and whether the game would even happen because if the game wasn't able to go on that night it probably would not have even happened at all so eventually after half an hour um and a few contacting with a few contacts with the um bot owner uh, we were able to get the bot up and working again however before that um the current on the ongoing solution was to play an alternative uh roblox game called loco official um and this is like deep iceberg lore with the MRE Uno League now. And there were many players and spectators who had to create a Roblox account for the first time or log in for the first time in like seven years. And I I would say that KT showed his first signs of being a boomer. So yeah, even though this uh, did not happen, the one thing we can we can uh, conclude from this is to never forget the clutch seventy two six five two. Hashtag never forget. 
but the game did go underway, and there was immediately a lot of um, issues with the bot. There was a lot of concerns on the card cachet being refreshed, causing some very um, insane hands, to say the least. Um, I'm pretty sure Charles had a third plus four also before this. This is just all I could fit, but yeah. Very, very strange hands, very lopsided hands to say the least, and it just gave KT no opportunity to um, really put himself back in this match. So, yeah, very unfortunate and confusing end for KT, um, but he's looking to recover in T4 under hopefully normal circumstances. Um, but yeah, and we also saw the quickest time uh, in an MRE game, an Uno MRE game. Um, his clock says zero minutes. I have the time myself. Official time is 58 seconds, so that's the new record for the quickest game. We'll see if anyone will beat that in the future, but pretty good time to set. That was a six-card start also, so it could have gone lower, but yeah. Uh, then we're going to move on to the classes. So, Very Gold wins Rookie of the Tournament. Uh, very good performance out of Very Gold here. Um, comes the third player to receive Rookie of the Tournament honors, and the, only, the other two people who received those honors were Peter Onjek and Cody Lamas, so that is some good. Uh, that is a good crowd to be with. Um, in my opinion, he's the very clear Cinderella of June, only one that not a lot of people know about, really, and generally speaking, definitely a huge underdog in the, against TJ Smith, but... Uh, yeah, and I mean, his rookie class was pretty solid. It was definitely stronger than the last rookie class. You have Julius Caesar, who was really good. Um, you also have a few people who were known to be well. Uh, GJ Curtis, Mac Johnson impressed. Um, yeah, Paz really came out of nowhere. Almost almost beat TJ, and that would have been crazy. Um, Yoshi, Yoshi was pretty solid, too, but a lot of good rookies for hopefully the future. Yeah, in terms of his chances to win the region, I mean, he has to go against TJ Smith. That's going to be a really tall task for him. To do so but he doesn't have great chances to win the region but i would say if he wins the region his chances to win the whole thing are gonna skyrocket so i really think this uh upcoming matchup against tj smith is really gonna determine whether very gold will be able to win the whole thing or even in the future win the whole thing or whether or not um he uh can keep up with um what he's been doing so far so I think this, in my opinion, I feel like this is very gold final right here. And whether he wins or loses, we'll have to see. But yeah. Moving on to an older class, uh, Jesse Turner wins veteran in the tournament after a, a lot of people, to say the least, were doubting him. Um, that is his first class in the award. Um, and this is an award that... Um, he lost. Uh, he lost rookie. He lost the rookie of the year to uh, or rookie of the tournament to Peter Onjak, and then last tournament lost it to Eli Gabret, uh, who made the final four. So Turner wins his first uh, first class. Um, his first his first class win, um, and his consistency was able to pull him through this win. Um, however, I'm I'm not sure if this consistency is going to be a downfall or a benefit, um, because this is his third electric gate, but he has never made it past this point. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of this veteran class also, there's a lot of uh, stronger names in the field. A lot of people who are Super League potentials. Um, Eli won it last, Eli won it as a sophomore last year, but this year falls, uh, or this tournament falls short. And then you also have Monkey and Austin Rogers who were relatively considered for this, but kind of just never really were into the fight, I guess. So... My, my question now for Turner is, is he going to be able to keep making the Electric Gate in the remaining two tournaments? And if he does, then if, if he just gets Electric Gate all five times, would that put him in the Super League or would that put him just out? We'll have to see about that. Um, but yeah, we'll see what Jesse Turner does. We'll see if he can make his first Final Four in Tournament 3. And it's going to have to be Charles Stanford for that. So I would say one of the, the on the easier side of his opponents. So... We'll have to see if he takes advantage or if he's just doomed to be stuck in the electric gate. Okay, so um, now we're going to move into the Super League level. Also, again, apologies for the cuts. I've had people jump in and whatnot, and it's kind of been a bit disruptive, but it's all right. We're still, uh, we're still all right, but we're going to jump to the Super League bubble here. Uh, here's the bubble once again. Um, again, this doesn't update till the end of the tournament, so this is based off um, after the uh, April, to April tournament, uh, so... One thing to note here, um, six of the eight remaining are in the top seven of Super League projections at the moment. So you got TJ Smith, G-Man, KT is out, uh, but Ryan Dagby, Peter Onjak, Jesse Turner, and Cody Lamas, uh, 
and, t and those are six of the eight remaining. The other two are not in the bubble right now. Charles Stanford and Very Gold may very well might see them in the bubble following the June tournament. Um, but in terms of this round, in terms of the bubble, the winners are easily the top seven. They're making a division for myself. And you know how I said that I, that's potential second line in the Super League? Um, well, this is really what I'm talking about here, because there might be a upper echelon, which might just secure themselves before, like, even Tournament 5. And then at that point, there'd be only really three spots available in the Super League. And even if we get three winners outside of the bubble, those top seven would still be in if they're consistent enough because of um, them separating themselves from the pack. So it's it's interesting because if this does happen where there's really a second line in upper echelon, then suddenly there's only three spots remaining in the Super League, and then it gets really intense for everyone who's below, who's below the cut line. So the winners of the top seven, but the winner another winner I'd like to also mention is Eli Gabra, who is getting absolutely saved um, by everyone below him losing early, which will prevent him from making a big drop here. So I think out of this round. Um, with no one below, but with no one below him besides the uh, two unranked players um, being in the electric gate, I think that really saves him from dropping a ton in the Super League. He's still going to probably drop, but it does save him from a catastrophic drop. Yeah, but then uh, the losers is pretty much everyone not in the top seven because um, they're just getting spread apart. And then if the top seven do jump out, jump out in a way, then suddenly there's only three spots left. But another person I also want to specify is Monkey, because, man, what a missed opportunity here. If he won, he would have probably jumped into the top 10 and into the Super League. But very disappointing loss there against uh, Ryan Dagby. Um, really puts him in a bad spot. He'll probably still he'll still be in the top 15, but, man, he could have really gained so much more out of this. And I think he's one of the biggest losers out of um, this round for the Super League bubble. Um, so our three keys look going forward for... Uh, the Super League after this round. Um, below top seven, auto birds can be absolutely vital because you do remember do remember if you win one of the tournaments, you were automatically locked into the Super League, kind of similar to the NASCAR playoffs, except less stupid. Um, but so those guys below the cut line, winning uh, one of these tournaments could be huge, and they would automatically be the Super League that could completely change the bubble. Um, five series wins that could be the line to making the Super League and might making not making it. We're not sure about that yet, but it could be projected to be like that. Um, I have a little graphic here just to show you what I mean. So here we have um, uh, the five wins line, as I like to call it. Um, we have five people who are currently above five wins. CJ Smith, Peter Onjak, Ryan Dagby, Cody Lamas, and G-Man. Uh, two of those are winners, so they're already in, and it's the top two. And then and three people who have generally uh, been very relatively consistent been really uh, strong. And it's guaranteed that uh, between Lamas and G-Man, uh, one of them is going to get six wins. Um, and between um, on Jack and Dagby, one of them is going to get seven. So, and then we have the people with four wins who are relatively close. KT and Aria Carmona, who have four wins outright. And then Jesse, Jesse Turner and Eli Gavra, um, who both technically have four wins. However, there is a DQ win included there, so that doesn't really help them. So really, they're at three wins, but they're still at positive records. So I would say that they're still in a relatively good spot. Um, and also another thing to mention, anyone who's italicized is still in. So you'll notice that the only person in the four wins column that's still in is Jesse Turner. So especially if he makes the electric eight, this could be big for him to jump out and make himself um, in contention to be relatively secured into the Super League um, and prevent uh, people who are doubting him uh, from being correct. Um, and then finally, we have you have to keep an eye out for the potential figures versus contenders for winning the Super League. Because like I was saying, if we have a top seven, uh, an upper echelon, that could leave the three people who get in as fakers and not really, and really just there to fill out the numbers. So you really have to consider um, at this point who is a favorite to win Super League and who is a favorite to just not just be there and just look pretty, I guess. So then finally we're going to move on to uh, one of my favorite segments, G-Man's Hot Takes. Um, this time it's going to be a little different here. I'm going to have uh, three levels of spiciness uh, for Hot Takes here. We're going to have mild, medium, and um, spicy or hot. So I'll, I'll do this based generally on the round um, or even in the future. So we're going to start with our, our mild take here. Something that's like 
it, it's technically a hot take, but something you could you could um, uh, digest pr pretty easily, and that is Lamas and Gmail will be the match of the round. Um, I think there's a lot of tension between the two in terms of um, what happened last tournament and what's at stake here. And I think G-Man especially really wants to get his run back on Llamas. And Llamas just wants to prove he's the better competitor overall. So I think there's a lot of motivation between the two. And I think it's going to result in a very intense fight. Um, this was also the only match um, in the Electric Gate last round that was actually sort of close. So we'll see how it goes this time round. Um, we'll see what each has learned, and uh, overall, we'll just see who is able to uh, come out on top. And if G-Man wins, that would be 1-1 one -one in the series, which would be really interesting, in my opinion. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the medium take, which is a little spicier, a little bit um, too much for some people, but I would still say at, at some points you can take it. Um, no matches will go less than 9 games. I still don't think we're getting any sweeps, um, but... I don't think there's going to be any complete blowouts here. I think at this point we've narrowed it down to our best eight, right? And our best eight for this tournament. Um, so I think it's. I think everyone here is going to be pretty good. I think the mistakes are going to be minimal, and I guess it's also like composure. Just everyone's. I think everyone's going to be composed. I don't know how composed in some essence, but it's going to be interesting. And I don't think anyone's going to get completely blown out. I think, according to this, I think the worst result we were going to get is a 6-3. But, yeah, I have faith that a lot of people are going to give the best. And then finally from my hot take, my very hot take, um, which I think a lot of people would disagree, I think the tournament winner is going to be a new champion. I don't think TJ or Peter is going to repeat here, despite what many people are thinking. Um... I think one of the new people, uh, people who have not won a tournament yet, are going to pull out and win, and that's going to be the third different winner. And I think a lot of people are going to disagree with me. I think a lot of people think TJ is the clear favorite, but I still think that one of the new, one of the uh, people who haven't won yet is going to take this one, and they're going to make it three for three and new winners. So yeah, those are my hot takes. So let me know if you agree with them or not. But now we're going to move on to the uh, regional finals preview and the uh, championship odds. My personal championship odds. Uh, don't gamble, please. These are not actual odds. I'm if you give me if you give me one dollar for someone to win, I am not going to repay you if they win. So please don't do that. Um, so here's the preview of the matches. We got T.J. Smith versus Ray Gold, Jesse Turner versus Charles Sanford, G-Man versus Cody Lamas, Ryan Dagby versus Peter Onjak, and you see a color coded based on region. Only four matches left. This is really the this is really the nitty gritty here. Uh, in terms of this tournament, we're really into the final stages here. Um, but in terms of odds, I have my odds right here. So uh, at championship odds, um, TJ Smith is the favorite. I have him five one odds. Cody Lam and then Cody Lamas is actually I would say the second favorite, eight to one. And G Man's pretty quick, pretty quick wipe behind him, ten to one. I'd say the only reason G Man's below Cody is because technically they're fighting each other, and Cody does have the one zero series lead. Um, Peter Onjag at 12 to 1 odds, Ryan Dagby 15 to 1 odds. Dagby, I think, low lower because he'd have to get through TJ if he wants to win, and uh, we all know how that went last time. Um, and we got a bit of the underdogs here. Jesse Turner 22 to 1, not terrible odds, but definitely not favorable. And then we have the two um, long shots here Charles Stanford 40 to 1, and Varigold 50 to 1. Both not great chances to win the whole thing, however, you never know, and they could make payday and cause the big upset. So. Yeah, uh, we're going to have our... Uh, and finally, I'm just going to wrap this up with um, our three things to point look forward, look out for. Um, and we're going to start with the first thing. Who can stand out from the rest? This is the point where someone's got to do something to show the, the stand out and be clearly a favorite to win the whole thing. Uh, this doesn't necessarily mean they're going to win the whole thing, but they got to stand out, whether it be Dagby's... Um, crazy undefeated streak going into the final four um or llama's crazy um strategy with no power plays uh something similar like that um it's generally just you have to do something at this point to stand out and really uh cement yourself as someone who can win the whole thing and if you don't do that i feel like you're just gonna fizzle out my second point is just no more mistakes this is the point where like you're not going to be forgiven for mistakes anymore and you're going to be punished and it's really who can be error free. You're going to get punished way more for a costly error at this point of the tournament. So 
um, who is able to prevent those silly mistakes and who is able to make it as far as they can without uh, making any errors. Who could have a perfect game, pretty much. And then finally, who can come in with the best strategy? I think at this point, there's a lot of strategy going into it. There's a lot of um, pre-gaming going on. Uh, not the drinking way, but there's a lot of uh, going into it, scouting and whatnot. Who's going to come in against their opponent? Who's going to have the best strategy to uh, prevail? And I feel like that's going to be super important in terms of who ends up winning this round and maybe even the whole tournament. Who has the best strategy going into each match and how can they adjust it and whatnot for depending on the opponent. So yeah, that's going to be it for this time. Thank you for watching. Uh, we'll come back uh, next time with the Electric 8 uh, reactions here. Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see if anything crazy happens in the Electric 8, which I feel like there is going to be. So that's going to be it for now. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.